the For Future Doctors Academy's Fracture Reduction Simulation Course in KID. Prepare yourself for the ultimate orthopedic surgical simulation procedure. Perform an open reduction and internal fixation, or short, in ORIF, on a fractured long bone shaft. Warnings. The course is exclusively intended for educational and training purposes, and the use of instruments and items in this kit on a real human or animal patient is strictly prohibited. The course is intended for students over 18 years of age. Adult supervision is required for students ages 15 through 17, not suitable for children under the age of 15. The kit contains sharp instruments and items. Be extremely careful not to injure yourself or any person assisting. You will need the following items. Sterile gloves, a surgical mask, a clean work surface cover, an antiseptic solution and gauze for preoperative cleaning, a suitable drape to isolate the operative area, a set of surgical instruments containing two cat's paw retractors, two bone repositioning forceps, a pair of scissors, a periosteal elevator, a cross-slot screwdriver, a tissue forceps and a needle holder, a marker pen and ruler, the surgical drill unit with accessories, a bone plate and bone screws, a scalpel with blades, sachets and the appropriate suture materials, gauze squares. The following items are optional in a simulation environment. A headlamp, a set of scrubs, a scrubs cap, sterile OT gown, wound dressing. You will also need a suitable surgical assistant to assist you. Do not perform the simulation procedure on your own as a single operator. Open a work surface cover on a suitable work surface, representing the patient on a clean sheet on the operating table in the OT. The operator and the assistant prepare their hands hygienically and then gown and glove according to protocol. The Apprentice Doctor for Future Doctors course thoroughly covers all the basics on sterility and asepsis and related protocols. The operative site is first cleaned with a suitable antiseptic solution and then isolated with a surgical drape. Mark your incision over the fracture line with a surgical marker pen while considering adjacent bony landmarks and the underlying anatomy. Ensure that it is a suitable length for unrestrained access. Make a number of cross markings to help you realign the opposing tissue margins during closure at the end of the procedure. Incise the skin, holding the scalpel upright and between 30 and 45 degrees to the skin surface. Figure 1 shows the correct way to hold a scalpel. Make the incision decisively. Cut through the epithelium as well as the dermis. In a real patient, one would inspect the wound margins for bleeding at this point in time. Warning! Take great care when working with sharp instruments. The scalpel is very sharp and can cause serious injuries if it slips. Proceed with deepening the incision. Ask your surgical assistant to help you by retracting the wound margins. The retractor should be placed on the opposing sides of the surgical wound, and the assistant should retract with the intention of opening the wound for proper visualization of the operative site. Retract within reasonable limits. Do not retract so hard as to tear the tissue. Use the paw side of the cat spa retractor initially. As one goes deeper down into the wound, the flat side of the retractors will be better for retraction and thus maximizing the surgeon's view of the surgical site. Respect the tissue and thus handle the tissue gently. Use a pair of dissection scissors to perform blunt dissection into the depth of the operative wound. When the operator is close to the bone, he or she makes the final cut with a scalpel onto the bone. Use a periosteal elevator to expose bone over the fracture and adjacent areas for visualizing the bone properly. Try not to strip the periosteum too extensively. Visualize the fracture properly and expose sufficient bone on either side of the fracture for accommodating the repositioning forceps as well as the transosseous plate. Remove any excess hematoma or tissue that is noted in the fracture between the two bone segments. Place repositioning or bone holding forceps on both sides of the fracture, but some distance away from the fracture line. Perform a test reduction. If you are confident that you can attain a good reduction, place the plate over the fracture line. Position the plate such as to ensure that there are the same numbers of holes on either sides of the fracture. Hold the plate in position and stabilize it with a suitable instrument. 
The assistant aids by stabilizing the bone segments and keeps them in position with the repositioning forceps. Drill monocortical holes and place the bone screws one by one. Ensure that the drill is rotating forwards or clockwise when drilling. Put the drill in reverse or anti-clockwise to facilitate withdrawal of the drill. Drill at a 90 degree angle to the bone surface. Aim for the middle of the hole in the plate or slightly away from the fracture line. This will ensure a bit of compression when the bone screws are tightened. Keep one eye on the fracture while drilling to ensure that the bone segments do not get displaced during the drilling procedure or while fixing the transosseous plate. Once all the screws are placed, inspect the fracture line again as well as the alignment of the bone. If you are unhappy, now is the time to correct a poorly reduced fracture. To redo the plating procedure, Move the plate over onto healthy bone and repeat the process while taking care to maintain a good reduction of the fracture and proper alignment of the bone. Blame the assistant if the reduction is inadequate for a second time. Once satisfied with the reduction and fixation, clean the wound and remove all bony fragments. The reduction procedure is now complete and the operator can now proceed with closing the wound using sutures. Use absorbable sutures to suture the deeper parts of the wound in the various anatomical layers. It is periosteum to periosteum, muscle to muscle, fascia to fascia, and subcutaneous tissue to subcutaneous tissue. The suture needle is clipped onto the needle holder and adjusted with the tissue forceps. The subcutaneous sutures are usually placed with the knots placed in the depth of the tissue, away from the skin side. The assistant retracts to facilitate vision during the suturing procedure. When the surgeon ties the knots, the assistant first eases and then completely releases the retraction to allow the opposing wound surfaces to approximate. Once the suture knot is securely tied, the assistant cuts the ends of the suture about 1 to 2 millimeters away from the knot. If the suture is cut too close to the knot, spontaneous unraveling may occur and if cut too long, one will leave an unnecessary amount of foreign material inside the wound. Close the skin with non-absorbable sutures. Start closing the skin at the cross marks made before making the incision. This will facilitate closing the skin undistorted. Observe the meticulous placement of each individual interrupted suture. A nylon 3-0 suture will be used for the closure. The surgeon starts at the far side and enters the skin at about 90 degrees angle. The needle penetrates both the epithelium and the dermis and emerges in the wound. The course of the needle is mirrored on the near side of the wound and then eased through the skin using the needle holder and toothed forceps. Do not touch the sharp needle with your hands. Use the forceps to adjust the position of the needle. The surgeon now ties the suture with a surgeon's knot and ensures that the knot is lying on skin and not on the incision. The assistant cuts the tied suture with suture scissors, leaving 4 to 5 mm free ends to facilitate removal at a later stage. Once neatly and securely closed, the operator or assistant follows with cleaning the wound nicely and then allows time for drying. The final step is the application of a suitable dressing by the assistant. Congratulations! You have just completed your first successful open reduction of a fracture long bone. The Apprentice Doctor How to Suture Wounds course and kit teaches students all the basics regarding surgical knot tying and suturing skills. The various techniques are clearly explained and you will have the opportunity to practice your suturing skill up to perfection. Visit our website www.theapprenticedoctor.com for more information about our courses, kits, resources and programs. The For Future Doctors Academy specializes in innovative resources and services to assist you towards a fulfilling career in medicine.